<laughs> Alright, so for our assemblies, we're going to be doing uh, bottom-up. Our, th our three strategies are going to be bottom-up, uh, create the parts, uh, put the part in the assembly, create another part, put that part in the assembly, create another part, put that part in the assembly. And that, again, is going to be your foundation piece to uh, get, you, get you into the, um, uh, into the process. As we go further into it, then we can, um, we can look at top-down. And in top-down assemblies, parts are related to other parts within the assembly. And I, I commonly say that those um, uh, parts are married and that you've tied them together and if you go to get them uh, divorced it's probably going to be pretty ugly trying to separate them all right and the more things that tie to other things the the worse the uh, the separation <coughs> um, then we get to master model which is um, the the multi-body parts or the solid bodies within a part are sent out to a uh, an assembly sent out to individual parts and um, and then tie back together through um, um, through that one part file. So we're going to create a part. Uh, first thing that I need is a uh, would prefer to have a folder. As I go through and I generate an assembly or and I start looking at sub assemblies, uh, the only real difference or the only real designation that a part is, or an assembly is a sub assembly is that I picked it up and I put it into another assembly as opposed to picking up that other assembly and putting it into this assembly. So really we're going to talk about top level, uh, intermediate level, and sub-assemblies. If you want to come up with a naming convention uh, to go with the, uh, the sub-assemblies, then um, you, can, um, you can build it into your, uh, into your naming. Otherwise, uh, it really comes back to the, uh, the folder structure. All right, so always kind of start off with the block with a hole in it. And we're just going to do a one inch by one inch. And let's see, let's put a, um, a half inch hole through it. All right, and extrude that out. So we're gonna end up with a cube. And I wanted that to be mid-plane, so let's go back and make it uh, mid-plane. And we're going to utilize that later. So uh, when I go to save this then, uh, let's see, that is our, uh, our current folder. So this is going to be uh, my assembly example. And if I group up all of my assembly, my part files, my assembly file, and organize them into folders, then my Windows folder structure will be a roadmap mirroring my um, assembly component structure. Right, so under the assembly, we're going to do the um, block uh, with uh, and save that one out. And I want to leave this open because we're going to look at the um, uh, the, the five minimum of five ways, probably six ways that you can insert a part into uh, into assembly. All right, so we had a, uh, a half inch pin, and as a general rule, I will um, design to zero uh, clearance fits. So half inch hole gets a half inch pin. And later on, if it becomes a tolerancing issue or when it becomes time to, uh, to tolerance, that's when I'll go back through and really look at the stack ups and say, okay, if this one goes down five thousandths and that one goes up five thousandths, then I have um, a maximum of ten thousandths clearance. Is that desirable for the, uh, for the assembly? Or if this is a press fit, um, I'm making one nominal size uh, with a four place decimal and the other one's a thou under for a light press, two or three thou for a hard press. And I can go through and drive those um, uh, based on um, kind of an after the, after the fact. So we're one inch on the block, let's go um, 1.5. No, I do not want a global variable, I got ahead of myself, so 1.5. 
You're not going to let me have it back? <laughs> Try that again, 1.5. So since I left the point 1 there with an inch, it was trying to, uh, to create the, uh, the global variable for me. All right, so this is going to be my pen. Does it matter what plane you draw that on, or does it have to be on a certain plane? No, fit? absolutely does not matter what plane. If you visualize or can uh, look into your magic crystal ball and say, when this goes into the assembly, it will go in better if it's in this orientation than draw it in that orientation. So you can rotate it in the assembly. After we get in, get it in the assembly, then we'll rotate it. Okay. All right. So at this point, I have my two components, the the, the pieces that we're going to uh, to examine first. Oh, I opened up another part, so got ahead of that. File new. Uh, we're going to do the assembly inch, and when we come in. We're going to have this yellow thing that says create a layout. Well, we're not really up to the layout, but it's going to be a 3D sketch. And the 3D sketch is something that we can go through and build up a scaffolding and structure to work from the assembly. So if I need a little more room, I'll collapse that down. And then with the, uh, the open documents, those are things that are immediately accessible that I can, um, I can bring in. So this is my first inserting a part into the assembly. Uh, I want to bring the block with the hole in, or I can come down and browse and go to some other some other part. If the file is open, then I already have access to it. Though um, coming down through the preview, all right. Well, we can look at the preview under the options. Yes, you want to start this command when you're creating a new assembly. So you want to see this begin assembly come up with and and ask you for uh, for a part. Not always, but if, uh, if it uh, is something where I don't need it, I can always just X out of it, go into my layout, go into whatever other function I'm trying to do, and bypass it. Um, the graphic preview, it's showing me its location, but it has not placed it yet. All right, so if I turn that off, it'll make the, the block go away. Make virtual. Virtual is a method where this part only exists in the assembly. So it would cons necessarily consume this part and uh, make it a bracketed part within the assembly. We're going to talk about those later as a, uh, a top-down uh, structure. And then envelope just says, give me the, uh, the outside shape. When I accept this, I'm going to get this um, block come in in a fixed state. The first piece is always fixed. And in most, um, most circumstances, that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right. If it is, if it did not come in the way that we wanted it, and I need to adjust it, then we're going to look at the expansion. Notice that everything that was contained in that part, as far as features and planes and bodies, everything is being shown to me in the assembly, but it has not taken over that part. It is merely referencing going out to that file and saying, let me, you know, let me grab your geometry and position it in the assembly, but I'm not going to uh, accumulate any more space than I need to in the assembly to uh, show it in its orientation. All right, so these are more for reference and editing and um, uh, being able to go in and make selections. So when I look at the front plane of the, uh, of the part and I look at the front plane of the assembly, because they were fixed, they're aligned. All right. It came in in the same same basic uh, orientation that it was in the um, uh, that it was in the part. So top and top are aligned. Right and right are aligned. All right. So to get rid of this little f, because um, you know again fixed isn't always going to be the best option. I'm going to right click and we're going to come down to float. Float says take the fix off and let me move this around. All right, so once I float this part, now it is free to move. Notice that my origin is staying stationary. The origin of the part is moving around with, with the part. So I am, in fact, moving the part. If I look at it from the front view and zoom out a little bit, I can move up and down, left and right. And if I go to the right view, back and forth. I have all of the degrees of freedom are, uh, are available to me. Within the, uh, the assembly tools, I can also come up to the rotate tool 
and we can rotate that into any position that we want. I can get this pretty screwed up pretty fast without even trying. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, the end game though is that I want to be able to take either a plane and a plane, a face and a plane, or a face and a face. Depending on what I have available to me, I want to be able to take some of those geometries and apply mate relations to them. So all of those sketch relations that uh, we worked on the first half of the semester, those are going to be very similar in coincidence, in concentricity, in tangency. Okay, we're going to reuse, and, and those should all be uh, be very familiar. So I picked this uh, this face, and I want it oriented to the top. I'm big on pre-selecting. All right, we don't have to pre-select, but if I hold down the control button and go to the top. I come up to this little paper clip that says mate, and the mate uh, function is going to rotate it into position. And if I go back to my isometric, whenever I'm in the mates, I'm typically going to have two solutions. All right, so I, that means that I have to have a mate alignment. All right, and the mate alignment, coincident was the desired. Here's the two pieces that I selected. Coincident was the desired mate. And at the bottom is the mate alignment. So any align just says flip me over. Is that the solution that I want? Then okay, I'm done with that mate. When I accept it, then we are doing the okay. Um, let's go with the um, the cylinder and the origin. And notice that it came up with a coincidence. So that means that it's going to follow that outside edge around and possibly be coincident through, um, uh, through that full circle. I have concentricity available. So if I go concentric, that's going to pull the circle back to where the origin is at the center of my cylinder. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that one and then accept it again to close out the mate. So we can zoom to fit. And then this is where we start looking at degrees of freedom. If this is a static part, I'm not done yet. I need to add one more mate to get it to be in position and not rotate. If this is a dynamic part, and that is its rotation, if that's what makes it dynamic, great. It can rotate. All right, so in, this is, in, in the rules of the assembly, depending on what my end game is, is going to determine whether I end up with a minus here or go to nothing which is fully defined. All right, so let's look at one of the uh, the common uh, common errors that will pop up. I don't think they've uh, they fixed it in 2013 yet, but 2014 was doing better. So if I pre-select a face and the right plane, I can go into mate and it's going to give me an error. Because this is a one inch block, that face can only be a half inch off of the existing plane. All right, so coincident is not a, a valid choice. Parallel is. And parallel will show me uh, aligned. And if I select any aligned, it will rotate to the opposite solution. All right, so this is where we start looking at the juggling act of do I go to, from plane to plane, plane to face, face to face? Um, in the case of cylinders, then the edges are kind of my fourth choice. Uh, vertices or points are my fifth choice, right? Because they're going to do different things as we go through and, and make those selections. Okay, questions? Could you have created a plane uh, <coughs> previously to uh, this If you need it, yeah. Your first piece uh, will probably be related to the origin because when we start looking at mass properties and engineering, the engineering properties specific, if we're doing a moment of inertia, if I can get that origin in, uh, in place and start looking at center of mass and moments of inertia with that as um, a goal, then I can, I can save myself time setting up coordinate systems and axes and going through the rest of the process. All right, so we brought in our first piece, we floated it, and we are ready to bring in another piece. All right, if I'm bringing in the same item, I can hold down the control button, click on the item in the, um, in the tree, maybe the other way, 
and drag it in. Had a little bit of a hesitation there. All right, and I can keep dragging those in, but my recommendation is that bring one part in at a time, get it as defined, uh, mated dynamically, statically, as much as you can before you bring the next part in. Because you really want to contend with this one while you're contending with this one. All right, when you get a feel for it, maybe one or two, uh, you really don't want to, in the case of the finals where there's 18 or 19 parts, drag in all 18 or 19 parts and then try to manipulate them. They will always, there will always be something in your way. There will always be something rotating, um, you know, to obscure your, your uh, view. In working with the assemblies, you are going to get very good at rotating. And you're going to rotate to the position. You're going to zoom in on the location. You're going to try and dial those in um, as, as, as uh, much as you can because I can see that cylinder from here but it is really not convenient to select it from here. Put it in a place where it is user friendly for you to go in and say, you know, I really want that cylinder. I'm making sure I got that cylinder. Right. So this would be one of those cases then that I can go control select and go to the main. Notice that I have two objects intersecting each other. We do not observe the laws of physics here. There, if there's gravity, it's because you've created it. Uh, two objects can occupy the same space. If there's water, electric power, uh, or um, uh, hydraulic power, fluid power, you have to provide it. Right? This is the virtual representation of your part in your assembly, and this is an incredibly powerful tool. But unless you tell it that those things are there, they do not exist. All right, so visually, I want to make sure that as I'm, I'm looking at those interferences, that I'm not unintentionally creating, creating an interference where there shouldn't be one. All right, so that gave me my concentricity. I can rotate to the face. Um, since I'm in the mate uh, command, I do not have to hold down the control button. I have a blue box that is accessible and waiting for me to make my next selection and those will be coincident. So we're staying in this first, first group, coincident and concentric, to get us started. And then we'll expand out to, well, we, we threw a parallel in there, but we can also do the perpendicular tangent um, distances and angles. So we'll work up into those. And then going down further, the advanced mates will throw in symmetry with uh, limit dimensions, limit angles. And under the mechanical mates, cam mates, so like a cam follower, uh, hinge mates, gear, rack and pinion, screw. So when we get into the um, uh, some of the vice uh, type where as it moves up and down, the knob needs to turn 18 times per inch because it's a 3 8 uh, 5 16 18 or 3 8 16, whatever. And then universal joint, kind of that hinge moment again, movement again. So on the standard mates, we have the two faces. It defaulted to coincidence, and I can go ahead and accept that. And we'll accept out of that. Okay, so that gives me those two. Um, coming back to the uh, to the face to face. So we've done uh, face to plane, uh, parallel face to plane, and I can also come back to. Let's see, that is, oh, making a classic mistake is my first block is expanded when it's really the second block that I need to be working with. So when I'm going through this process, notice that we have block withhold num uh, instance one, instance two, and instance three. All right, if I'm going to make errors, it's probably because I think I'm working with instance three when I'm really showing instance two. All right, so let's take a look at the right plane. And if I go to the right plane of the, um, the assembly and throw a mate on it, then I can start looking at some of these other, um, other mate types. So coincident, we're at coincident. It will not rotate anymore because the right plane is to the right plane of the, uh, of the part is the right plane of the assembly. Parallel will do the ba same basic thing, keep it from rotating. All right, so parallel doesn't generate anything bad. 
perpendicular will rotate at 90 degrees. All right, still a valid solution. Uh, distance, I don't think we can much do anything with distance because it's already an angle and they can e it can either be zero or zero. All right, so let's bypass um, the distance and go to angle. And if I give it a 20 degree angle, notice it has the rotation. We have a flip mate alignment, which will rotate it the other way, but I also have a flip dimension. So now we're not only going this way or that way, but now do I want the angle to be to that side or to that side? All right, on a block, you're not going to see it so much. Uh, when it gets into more complicated geometry that are being tied together, it will, it will make a difference. And then, um, let's see what one, and then uh, lock uh, puts it into a position and acts in, in a, a little bit like a, a fixed relation. Lock at the, uh, the last resort. Really, one of the other mates should get you where you need to go. All right, so, so far, um, I'm going to stand by the hierarchy that says we want to be face-to-face, plane-to-plane, plane-to-face, um, yeah, whatever the other one was. <laughs> uh, you know, somewhere in that combination. Uh, after that, then, we can start looking at edge-to-edge. -edge. All right, and the issue with edge-to-edge -edge is that we're going to be able to rotate about that edge, and maybe or maybe not, we're getting uh, getting the right orientation. It's it's not a an invalid or it's not a um, it's um, how do I say it's double negative. If it's um, um, probably probably put it better to uh, to say that it's down on the list for uh, for the reason that uh, let's say I made that one coincident. It's down on the list because of that full rotation going through. If I can get that same thing with an existing, then um, then I'll I'll use a coincidence over the uh, over the edge. And then if we come back in, pick up our angle again. Um, So it was at 108, so we'll round that angle off, call it good. All right, all of those combinations are then getting these to go fully defined. If I expand out, these are all of the mates that I have applied. So at a minimum, um, there may be some mates where you can get away with, with two. Most of the time, you're going to add three mates to get this to a uh, position and orientation, or location orientation. So going back through this mates list, all of them is going to be somewhat tedious to identify the one that you really want. All right, so under each of the individual items is only the mates that have been applied to it and the parts that it shares them with. So this is going to be my preference for identifying an existing mate if I generate an error, if I generate an overdefined condition that is, um, um, is because I've got mates in conflict. These are where they're going to show up, and this is where I'm going to go and try and resolve them. Okay. Red in that Pardon? Red in that oh yeah, you'll have uh, yellow explanation points and red arrows and warnings popping up and danger will rise. <laughs> All right, so the other thing of, of note then is I've got my base piece in, I've got my, my uh, orientation in place. At some point, all these little blue origins are really going to start to annoy me. All right, they're good up to the uh, to the point, and after that, we'll come up to the view. And after I turn the origins off, it, it's again keep your screen as uncluttered uh, as possible. Make sure that you, what you have on the screen makes sense and is there is helping you out, not um, not making it more difficult. Okay. Let's go ahead and insert. Uh, so let's see, we've done the, um, the, the block from the beginning, insert uh, doing the control from the, uh, from the feature. Um, I can do an insert uh, component. All right, new part, new assembly. Those are, are top down, so we'll try to avoid those. So insert um, uh, component. We'll bring in a pen. In this case, it, 
again, when I come up to the OK or I, I want to go ahead and see the preview, it's going to lock it to the origin or it's going to fix it to the origin. All right, and I don't necessarily want that. So as long as I drag out into the work area, I can kind of halfway position this without it going to that to that fix. So it's an underdefined, ready to do something for me pin. All right, and the pin then can go concentric with uh, with the um, the wall. And I want it some distance out. All right, so it's going to go concentric. I'll grab the edge. In this case, the edge isn't isn't bad. It's not my preference. I would rather have the face, but I'm not going to um, uh, to go back and pick it up. Probably the one downside, as I said, I wanted it to uh, to stick out a quarter of an inch. Not with the edge. It's grayed out. It's not there. It's not happening. All right. So if I go back to the face. Now I have the distance, and we're going to go 0.25. And if I move that out of the way a little bit, notice that I have the flip dimension, which will, does it go, is it an any or is it an outy? And then on the mate alignment, does it flip around completely? And because reversing it changed uh, the mate alignment of the previous concentricity, it has to go back and do an update. All right, so it says, well, if, if I do this, it's going to create a conflict. So to, create, uh, to correct for that conflict, I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and automatically uh, reverse the mate alignment of the other part. All right, perfectly valid um, um, solution. All right, we go back again. It's going to warn me again, and that is what I wanted, so uh, we'll go ahead and accept it. All right, so this is under defined. The pin's not technically capable of moving, the only thing it can do is rotate, and if I grab it and I do a bunch of that, it's not really apparent that it's rotating until we turn those origins back on. All right, so with the origins in place, as I rotate, well, as I sort of rotate that, <laughs> then the origin will, will spin about its axis. If that's a problem, then I can always go back and say, make this coincident, make this parallel pins and uh, fasteners and those types of things. It depends on how much of your hurry you're in, and usually you're in a hurry. So do you really want to, does that, does that need to be stationary kept from rotating? We don't know yet. I right, probably won't know until it generates an error or something that uh, is because something is tied to it. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll leave that one for now. Um, when we're looking at this from the, uh, the display state, I want to look at its intersection. So since just this was an inch and a half, we are a quarter inch exposed here and a quarter inch in the other piece. Mechanically, that is not enough engagement to, you know, to call it a, uh, you know, a stable join or, you know, location or anything like that. It may be enough to keep it from sliding, but uh, to be um, a structural member, we're not, we're not there yet. So I want to use um, those hidden um, hidden views, hidden lines shown, hidden lines visible, to go through and do some of that analysis. Go through and is this one intersecting this? Oh no, those are overlapping, and I can get a better perspective out of that um, out of that view. Uh, the one that's probably until you were over into the photo rendering or the the picture side is the um, the edges uh, removed. And that's what that one's called. Um, shaded, shaded without edges, basically. That leaves a little more fuzz, you know, fuzzy between the um, uh, the hard edges, as opposed to as opposed to what we've been working in, shaded with edges. The edges and those highlight give you an extra definition to um, uh, to keep that view, keep that um, uh, your your perception of what's going on in the assembly. All right, so we mentioned that we can move the, uh, the parts around. Um, I, I'm going to backtrack just a, just a second. Let's see, the origin is there. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and turn the origins back on. All right, so the origin of the assembly is there. And if I am moving and panning around, all of the origins are moving together, as opposed to the part moving around the origin. 
So one of the very common beginning errors is to think that you're moving the part when you're really moving the view, or moving the view when you think you're really moving the part. All right, so keeping the origins on or keeping that, uh, that basic uh, perspective until you get a few pieces in and get, um, uh, get that feel for the, for the part, that's going to help you out. All right, so the origin. Let's bring in another pin. Um, so we did the um, insert components. Let's go ahead and do the pull down insert component, existing part and assembly pin. We'll drag it into place, and this one will go um, through that part. And I'll go ahead and just make that coincident, and we will leave it to where it can work. <coughs> right, so we're basically just adding and, and going through that process uh, to build up these uh, these blocks and these uh, these geometries. Could you, from this point? go in and make the first pin longer, or do you have to go back into the part? Keep in mind that if I make the pins longer because I haven't set up configurations or done anything to uh, control it, that when I look at its dimension, I'm changing the dimension of both of them. Oh, you can't just change the dimension of one? There are instances of the same part. You change the part, you've changed all the instances as well. That's where it comes back to where the, uh, it comes back to the horsepower of the configurations. If this is able to say this is my inch and a half pin, this is my two inch pin, I can have instances of the same parts with configurations that say they are different lengths. <coughs> All right, so we'll get we'll get into those and play with them a little later. That has changed the port We go back up to window and I open up the uh, the pin. And we look at the uh, the pin. It is now two inches over one and a half. So you can change the stuff in the assembly. It is very associative. It is going to um, it is going to migrate. It's going to be associative between the assembly, the the parts. A change in the part updates the assembly. A change in the assembly updates the part. Uh, depending on how it was set up, a change in the drawing will migrate back. You want to minimize how much drawing changes happen, though because they're most likely to, to be undesirable. What about assembly changes? Does that make sure to stay away from or not a big deal? No, um, absolutely. The assembly is, is there for you to look for those interferences and get your visual, get the picture in your head matching the picture that's on the screen because you're going to have all of that, that geometry in front of you. You're going to have um, you know, your best chance of catching it before it goes to manufacture is, is right here. And then as it goes over to the drawing, um, as anything changes, it's going to associate back through the rest of the modules. All right, so since we came to this one, let's uh, tile vertically. And if I tile vertically, these are my three open parts. And I can grab any of the existing part. One of the advantages uh, of this is that I'm going to automatically get a smart mate. And smart mate, mate says if I grab this cylinder and drag it to this cylinder, they are going to automatically go concentric. If I go from this edge to this edge, well, I might get concentric, I might get coincident, I might get both, but it's not as predictable. Excuse me. So what I don't want to have happen, or what I would prefer not to have happen is to have all 20 parts open so each of these screens is about an inch by an inch and I really have no definition. So if I'm not using this one, it's not going to hurt my feelings to say, okay, I'm done uh, using that one right now. The other side is the, uh, the computer systems, the hardware uh, side of the game is that um, most of our um, uh, computers are capable of handling the multiple files being open. But there really is kind of a limit of, I have uh, 10 parts and two assemblies and three drawings. And at some point, the computer just goes, whoa, come on, give me a break. You know, and then that's when you're going to start crashing. So if you don't need it open, that's a good time to, to go back and clean up and close it. All right, so again, my, my third way then, did I do? OK, so we the fourth way um, is I can grab this. Um, this piece and drag it to this piece and what I'm looking for is my stack of marshmallows. At least that's what they look like to me as I've... Yellow uh, things? 
The little yellow things look like marshmallows to me, or always have looked like marshmallows. And when I drop it, it comes up to the mate and it says, oh, you want these concentric? Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> and then we go back and pull it in. Um, I want that one, that face, to line up with that face, which is now there. And if I go in and mate that, it will come up with coincidence. And both of those are capable of rotating. And in maybe not 100% uh, apparent, <laughs> but it is in collision. I am intersecting those parts, and those are the things that you're looking for. That is the, oh, wait a minute, that can't be, or that's not going to be acceptable. Now is the time to catch that and come up with, uh, with a solution. So we put that at an, at an angle. And uh, I know that the block with the hole, I look back and I find the angle. I can delete it, but in certain cases, I can also come back and edit the feature, clear out those, those mates, and say, you know, I really don't want that to be um, uh, at an angle anymore. Let's try coincident. And based on my selection, if I try to get this edge and this cylinder, mm, not really liking that. How about tangent? Ooh, it rotated into position for me. It likes tangent. So that same type of uh, associativity that we were trying to build into the sketches, that if something grows or shrinks, the other parts move in relation to it, I can do that same strategy and build in that same kind of logic and structure into my assemblies by saying, if this pen now goes to one inch, well, it's going to blow the block away, but um, this will rotate up with it. If, uh, if I shrink this down to a quarter inch, the, the block will rotate over with it. So let's do that as an example, and then we'll move it back. One, two, five, and rebuild, and rebuild, and the pin pulls it back over and it stays in contact. All right, got a nice loose, <laughs> loose fit going. <laughs> I, think, I don't think that is a, um, a rotating fit anymore, but it is. All right, so let me find my, my geometry. We'll put it back to, uh, to half inch and once again rebuild. All right, so at some point I need to save this. And uh, we're going to save all of the, uh, the components with them. Since I made a change to the pin on the fly in the assembly, it needs to be updated and allowed to rebuild in the part file uh, as well. So uh, this is my block and uh, pin. All right, so the name changes to block and pin assembly, and we have our stack up of, of geometry. Uh, we can collapse some of these up a little bit to bring, bring them in. And if I need to, sort of like we, um, I think I did in the, um, uh, in the part files, I can add these to folders. So if I get a, a large accumulation of parts or a lar large accumulation, and want to simplify these, these are all of the blocks folder. And certain items will be able to, I can suppress them as a group, I can hide them as a group, and hide and show as a group, suppress, unsuppress as a group, and then expand them out, and we'll still have the availability to, I want to see that one, I don't want to see, want to see, don't want to see. Okay. All right, so we'll finish up tonight with the, um, uh, the whole sub-assembly thing, is right now I have uh, the block with a pen. If I open up a new um, assembly inch, it's going to see that the pin is still open, the block and the pin is still open. I still have three more methods of, uh, of bringing parts in, but we're running a little short of time. So let's go ahead and bring this one in. Uh, let's see, we drag and drop. The other one then is, we'll come over here to Windows. And if I drag my window in, I can grab any one of these all right, so in this case, I'm bringing in assemblies, and I can bring in as many assemblies as I want. I can also bring in the original individual parts. All right, if there's a, a purpose or a reason that I need one of those, then I can, I can build those in as individuals. You were just doing that file explorer? Windows Explorer is a drag and drop from the folder. 
right? And then uh, let's see, we did the control select from the feature. I forgot about the control select from the work area. Apparently that one takes a little more finesse. All right, so we get that one. Uh, we're going to go over all of these again on uh, on Thursday, so not that big of a deal. Uh, open in SolidWorks, and this is all of the current files that are open, as well as if I expand out, this is going to mimic our uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, so let's grab, well, that's Assembly 2. So I can't insert Assembly 2 into Assembly 2, of course. I can't have a circular argument. So if I make Assembly 2 and then I make Assembly 3, I can't put Assembly 3 back into Assembly 1. And, and have it generate that circular um, circular logic. Um, so the block with the pin, I'll expand that out on the task pane, and then I can drag one more in that way. And we'll go ahead and let that save as assembly two. Rebuild and save the, uh, the components. Open up the next level. And pretty much do this every semester, and they always come out different on the um, uh, the Art Deco side of uh, side of things is we'll go ahead and let it position back to its origin, and if little blue dots didn't bother me before, they're really starting to now. And we bring in a couple more, and then this becomes the test of how good your video card is. So we will save assembly three, and it's just a matter of how you want to organize your top level assembly in most of the projects, the, the larger projects that I've done, the parts have taken on a natural, this is a good place to call this a sub-assembly and putting one more part or one less part um, you know, doesn't, doesn't help or hurt one way or the other but you, it's a noticeable difference in the, in the mechanism or the, um, uh, the way that we're playing. Okay, so assembly threes into assembly four And so on and so on. And we'll get rid of the origins. And now I have a box of Tinker toys, exactly. And we save that as assembly four. Okay, so if I go back to my window and do the uh, the whole. I'll oh, go tile horizontally. That's going to be everything. My, my pin, if the block was still open, I would see the block and the pin. I would see the block and the pin assembly. I would see assembly two with the first grouping, assembly three with the groupings of assembly two, and assembly four with the groupings of assembly three. All of these can then be, let's see, do I need to drag? Or I can grab an individual part from another another folder, another file, or grab the whole thing. Pick a way to bring your files in and stay with it, and the one time that it's convenient, or the one time it's more convenient, to bring them in the the six other ways, five or six other ways, then go ahead and do it. But I, you know, I, I want to say after 16, 17 years of using SOLIDWORKS, most of the time you will see me coming up to insert and going to component and the existing part and assembly and going through it that way or coming up to the icon because those are the ways that I run through the maze over and over and over again. So getting started on these, um, let's see. If you want to uh, to attempt the the configurations, uh, you can uh, can watch the videos on YouTube and see if you can follow the configuration um, uh, strategy. You can draw each of these individually. You can draw one and save it, and then modify it and do a save as, and then modify it and do a save as, and modify it and do a save as. All right, your choice. And uh, on Thursday, we'll go ahead and build these with the save as strategy, and we'll save the configurations for, um, uh, for a week from tonight. All right. So once we have uh, these nine or ten parts, whatever there are, uh, uh, built, then we'll come through and we'll start looking at, um, at this geometry, putting them together 
and instead of just kind of haphazardly throwing in and looking at different mates and how things fit together, we will be going through with a purpose of let's put this one in place, let's put this one in place, make these go. What happens if this spins? Because it's a pin, it's going to spin. I mean, even if we press press fit those and they're tight, I hit that hard enough, it's going to spin. It's a you know, it's a light press or even a hard press, enough force. All right, so going through that that whole engineering analysis, um, being able to make make determinations and make educated guesses based on our geometry. Questions? This is where it gets fun. The assemblies are are really. Um, uh, really a good jumping off point that all of the, the hard work, all the work that you've done up to this point in, in creating those, um, uh, those, those sketches, the parts, making them good, reliable, stable uh, geometry is going to pay off because your assemblies are going to be good, stable, reliable assemblies. And then those create good drawings, which your good working drawings go to manufacture and um, you know, if you get, get good parts out of manufacturer, okay, that's kind of the, the end game. We want things to go together and not cost any more than, um, than, they, than they have to or should. Should those take <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so we'll go again on Thursday. Have a good night. See you. Uh, stick around for lab if you have questions.